Okay, I want to give you a little more information about electrical conductivity because I find that that's often a little bit confusing for students. And in fact, electrical conductivity is used a lot in greenhouses um, and is a very useful kind of measurement, but it really can only be used effectively when you really understand it. You understand what it really means and you understand its limitations. So first of all, let's talk a little about just what we mean by electrical conductivity and the units of measure for electrical conductivity. If we just looked at water, pure water, if that would even be possible, you know, getting very, very absolutely pure water, it actually would be a pretty poor conductor of electricity. But as you know, we often think of water, you know, as, as being a very good conductor of electricity. The reason for that is, is because of all of the different ions, both anions, or negatively charged ions, and cations, positively charged ions, that are floating around in the water. So things like calcium, plus plus, potassium, chloride, sodium, uh, nitrate, these things all carry charges. And when they're in the water, because they're charged, they help to transmit those electrons, or they help to transmit that current, to conduct that electrical current. And the more of these ions in the water, or in the solution, whatever we're talking about, the better at conducting that electrical current that solution is. So its, it's effectiveness at conducting an electrical current relates directly to if you will, the number of charges, if you will, in that water, um, or or just the general concentration, if you will, of anions and cations in that solution. Now, when we're talking about a fertilizer solution, you know, water can have lots of things in it. When we're talking about a fertilizer solution, again, many um, of all of the different mineral elements that we're interested in or that we supply uh, through our fertilization program, will dissolve and exist in solution, uh, many of them, the vast majority of them, as cations and anions. Remember, you're studying that issue of fertilizer salts. And a fertilizer salt is a compound that dissociates, when you put it into water, into an anion and a cation. And in fact, that's why a lot of the fertilizers we use for water-soluble fertilizers are so soluble and so effective in liquid forms. So if you look at a lot of our fertilizer mineral elements we're talking about, you know, we're talking about nitrate, we're talking about ammonium, uh, we're talking about potassium, we're talking about calcium, magnesium, sulfates, all these things are, in fact, existing as anions and cations. So by measuring the electrical conductivity when we're talking about soils or fertilizer solutions or things like that, what we're essentially measuring is the overall content then of all of these different fertilizers, ions and cations that are either in that soil sample and we pulled off the solution and tested it or we're actually testing the fertilizer solution that we're using. So that's kind of what electrical conductivity is, is about. But let's look at units of measure before we go to the next step because we need to understand that. We've talked about its efficacy of conducting a current. Well, the unit of measure for conductivity is a mo. You might remember that the unit of measure for resistance is an ohm. So in doing conductivity, they just flipped it. So it's like a 1 over ohms, or flipping these units. So our basic unit is a mo. But that's incomplete because when you're measuring conductivity, the distance over which the current is being conducted is also important. In other words, you're getting a little bit of resistance. The longer you've got to carry that current, the more that resistance uh, really accumulates, if you will, or, or occurs. So there is a distance factor, and that is always in our measurements per centimeter. 
So our basic unit of measure for electrical conductivity is a mo per centimeter. It can also be what's called a semen per centimeter, S per centimeter. And in fact, these two units are identical. One mo per centimeter is the exact same thing as one semen per centimeter. Now, to measure something as a mo or a semen per centimeter would be an extremely concentrated solution. And most of our soil samples and most of our fertilizer solutions are not going to be anywhere near that concentrated. So in reality, we're often expressing it as a milli or a thousandth, a millimo per centimeter or a millimo, excuse me, a milli semen per centimeter. This is real common. If you're dealing with very dilute solutions, you might see that instead of a millimo or a milli semen, it might be expressed as a micro mo or micro semen. But a mo and a semen, a micro mo per centimeter, a micro semen per centimeter, they're all the same thing. So those are our units of measure, our units of measure for electrical conductivity. Let's take one little tangent. I love taking you down tangents, but it's something I want you to be aware of before we do an example here on, on um, electrical conductivity. Sometimes you, a lot of times actually, you will get soil test results or water test results back from a lab and they will tell you SS, or soluble salts. And then you will look at the number, or in the footnote, and you'll see them saying as millimo per centimeter. That is, in fact, completely wrong. Traditionally, soluble salts is a concentration measurement and is reported as parts per million. In other words, you'd just be looking at those ions and deal with it as a pure concentration measurement reported as parts per million. And we used to do that a lot, and that's not an uncommon thing in field soils to get a soluble salt reading. Again, as expressed as parts per million, a true concentration measurement. However, EC, electrical conductivity, is not a concentration measurement. It's an electrical conductance measurement. The units for a true soluble salt measurement are parts per million. The units for a true EC test are millimo or millisiemen or what have you per centimeter. But a lot of labs, for some just dumb reason, will put on their soil test this SS, and then they'll give you a 1.5 and then down in the footnote, say, as millimo per centimeter. you got to look at the units to know what they're talking about. And if they tell you SS, but the units are reported as millimo per centimeter or micromos or whatnot, they really aren't giving you soluble salts. They are, in fact, measuring and reporting electrical conductivity, not soluble salts. If they give you something with the units of PPM, then they were actually measuring true soluble salts as a concentration. We don't really care too much about soluble salts. It doesn't tell you a whole lot. Now, we can use EC for a number of useful things. And I want to show you something here. Uh, we'll talk about what it does measure and what it doesn't measure. And we get to do one of my favorite things again. We get to use M&Ms but it makes a great analogy. Assume this is a solution, and these are all the anions and cations floating around in that solution. And they're different things. You see we've got red, yellow, orange, green, brown, blue. So maybe the blues are nitrates, and the oranges are calcium and, and different things. Well, electrical, a, a soluble salt reading would be basically count all of these up. How many milligrams total or per liter um, to get a part per million. Electrical conductivity is going to run a current through here and see how effectively that current is conducted. And if I only have a small number of ions, it's not going to be as effective at conducting that current through there as if I have a whole lot of ions. So basically, the more of all these fertilizer ions I have, the higher my EC reading is going to be. Now, so it's going to tell me total ion concentration, and that's going to be directly proportional to the concentration of all those ions in solution. What it will not tell me is how many greens, browns, yellows, oranges, or what have you I have. It won't tell me what the ions are. 
just the sum total. So it'll never tell me how much nitrate or ammonium or calcium or whatnot I have. It'll only tell me sort of that overall total fertilizer concentration, either in that fertilizer solution or in the solution that I pull out when I do a soil test. So that leaves us, well, you know, what can we use EC for, and what good is it, and what are its limitations? Well, we can use it for a number of things. Let's say we make up a fertilizer solution using a known fertilizer. Well, on the back of that label, you will usually see uh, that the company will tell you that a certain part per million fertilizer solution of that fertilizer should have an EC of a certain number. So you could quickly, if you're like, I wonder if I made it correctly, you could do a quick test. Does it come out to the EC? It should. You might wonder, is my fertilizer injector working correctly? Well, you could go out there and pull a sample of it after it's gone through the injector and been diluted and see, is the EC coming out what it should be at that concentration? Also, in hydroponics, you will find that we're always managing our nutrient solutions that we're recirculating or that we're applying based on EC. We sort of know what the ratio of all these things are because we put them in the solution at the ratio we wanted, at the beginning at least, and we just want to get the concentration correct. So we'll often express our fertilizer concentration as EC, that we want to have this particular fertilizer solution mixed up with these ratio of elements, and we apply it so that the solution that's being put on the plants or through the NFT troughs or what have you is at a 1.5 EC, 1.5 millimo per centimeter EC, for example. Uh, we may test the solution draining, you know, and there's a certain target EC that we want. If it's too low, we might increase our feed. If it's too high, we might need to leach. Now, there's none of that telling us anything about the specific elements. It's telling us about the general fertilizer concentration. But that tells us a lot. It tells us whether we are under-fertilizing or over-fertilizing. Uh, when we take a soil test, same thing. We may be fertilizing with a known solution with the right ratios. We just want to know, generally, do we have the fertility concentration right? Do we need to increase it or decrease it? Now, then if we want to know, well, is my potassium correct? Um, for example, uh, nutrient solutions when we're fertilizing or when we're, when we're growing greenhouse hydroponic strawberries, they'll suck a lot of potassium during fruiting, and that solution will get out of whack. Well, EC can tell you the general concentration, but it's not going to tell you what is my potassium concentration. Or when you do a soil test, the same thing. If you're wanting to know what those specific mineral element concentrations are, then you're going to have to actually do a, a full-blown test where you send the, the sample off to the laboratory to have that tested. But... Again, for many, many situations, we can use electrical conductivity as an easy, cheap, quick measure of the fertility, overall fertility concentration in our fertilizer solution or in the substrate in which we're growing the crop. So hopefully that helps you understand EC a little bit better.